Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, Caitlin Bristow is back on Instagram after going dark for several weeks. Following her breakup with Jason Tartik, ending their engagement, I'm going to share what she posted in this Instagram post. Her comments are turned off, and again, it's no judgment by me. I mean, I, and it shouldn't be any judgment by any of us. We don't know what it's like to walk through the shoes of being an influencer um, at Caitlyn's level. You know, I was actually watching this uh, Jake Paul, Logan Paul documentary on Netflix last night because I couldn't sleep. I got home from my show. Thanks for coming to everyone out there. And I was wired. I had an edible. I was like, I'm trying to calm down. And they discuss what it's like to be under the public scrutiny. And you, just, you can't imagine, you can't fathom this sort of audience. We've never had to deal with it before. So no judgment by me whatsoever that she's back on Instagram. But very interesting to see that the comments are disabled. And it's like, Caitlin, you don't owe this platform for anybody to pass judgment on you. You can post all you want. We don't need the comment section. We don't need to see what Deborah thinks from, you know, Tallahassee when she, well, I feel like if you didn't do this or, you know, we don't need any of that judgment. So you can continue to post your life um, and, uh, and all that. So very happy for her. We're going to share that. And also we've got, after I share this post, Rachel Lindsay on the podcast, I'm going to share a couple clips where Caitlin discusses how she's feeling because this was uh, filmed almost immediately after uh, the announcement and all of that jazz. So here's the post. Uh, it's a carousel of images. And her comment said, not to spoil the ending for you, but you're going to be okay. And it's a beautiful selfie of Caitlin, followed by flowers and some jewelry and some random photo she's going to show about in her video um, and her just getting on with her life. She went to a psychic. Oh, ladies in your 30s, when you start going to psychics, you know shit's going down. I'm kidding, folks. Um, she said, it is only heavy because you are deciding over and over again to carry it. Embrace change. Loosen up your sense of identity. Let yourself walk a new path. You do not have to ignore or erase the past. You just have to wholeheartedly embrace the present and move on. And then it's a very honest photo of her crying. And some people comment, well, who does it? Whatever. You know, look, I mean, whatever. It's We all have different ways of coping, right? So big virtual hug to Caitlin if you're out there listening. And um, actually got a present over there. I need to send that out today. We got a little present for her. Um, going to send it. Didn't take v Venmo donations. I actually bought it with my own money, but it's, it's, it, it's personal. I've got, I was just looking at it. Reminded me, I got it. Remind me this afternoon, get that in the mail. Um, here it is. Here's what she had to say, uh, with Rachel Lindsay. Out and talk. So you get drinks and it was the craziest. So we I did know that. your girlfriends were like, <laughs> they had you. the best time. And then after that, they really wanted to go sing karaoke. So we went to oh. this place called the wild beaver. Mm where you ride bulls and sing and, and so. Oh, let's move, sorry, let's move to the 3.30 mark here. Uh, she's talking about her time in Nashville. Mad anxiety, like, mm. it was the first time, cause I've been off social media for eight days and it was the first time that. And some people might say, oh, only eight days, whatever. We'll get into that in a second. My anxiety was creeping in and I was like, no, 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 no. Cause usually I only get it if I'm hungover or if I'm on my period. And I'm not I, either one of those things. And so I took a little thing called lorazepam. And I feel like I'm still in a dream. Okay, so you That's have what like I'm that, at. that like buzz, kind of like that. Do you ever have you I, ever microdosed? Yes. Like, now I would like that feeling. Oh, is that not the feeling? That's you not have? the feeling. Okay. Okay. This okay. feels like I'm half asleep, um, like a couple brain cells missing from the weekend, and I don't know where I am or what time it is, and I'm just. You're on the mend. It's okay. I woke up bright, bright eyed, bushy tailed this morning, did a workout, and now I'm like. Ugh. If it makes you feeling better, I can't tell. Okay. Yeah, Rachel's a great, she's a great conversation for Caitlin to have right now because she really calms down Caitlin's energy, as you can see here. Rachel's a calming force. She's like, yeah, you're, you're doing good. You're on the mend. You're all right, girl. It's a very good thing here keep you awake okay keep me awake keep, I'll do don't my best. bore me okay <laughs> don't bore me here today um i'm so excited you're here we i haven't know. talked in so long this has been a long time coming it really has been i was trying to think of the last time we podcasted and i couldn't um but i have so much to just talk to you about or ask you about because i'm like first of all how's brian brian's good so yeah. they get into this conversation with Brian, who will share this quick reel here is our guest tomorrow on driving with dave here it is, folks, getting my lenses cleaned off. And ain't no scrubs here, folks. 
Brian Abasolo. We talk a lot about his relationship with Rachel coming off of the show, how he was able to not be villainized on his season of The Bachelorette and all of that. That's going to be up tomorrow on the Dave Neal Show or on the podcast Bachelor Rush Hour. So let's go back to what Rachel has to say with advice to Caitlin for dealing with a public relationship. Now, something that I found, and I talked to this lady who's a social media trauma counselor, Mm -hmm. and she talks about how pressure of relationships on social media can destroy a relationship without even being in the public eye. Okay, so so perfect note to bring you back to it. Here's what she said. You don't owe anybody anything. But the problem is you built this. It's, right. It's kind of your Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. You built the monster, you fed the monster, and then at any given time that monster can eat you, mm-hmm. right? And what is so important, every time I get in this conversation, there's always- and By some- the way, just so some people commented saying, oh, they're kind of like overly dramatic here, but it's not. Suicide rates are up, self-harm, Judgment, depression, they're all up because we compare ourselves to others using our devices. We have a bully in our pocket to compare is despair. So this lady, and we'll get back to what Caitlin said to Rachel right here, but this lady, Jenny Wise Black, she doesn't have a smartphone. She doesn't deal with it. She challenges uh, uh, Caitlin to her face right here to go dark and says, you're not going to do it. Um, I do not believe there's a way you can balance it at all. And... I think that the very best, the only good thing that you can do is put it in the proper order. Yeah. And what I don't know, I don't think you'll listen to me. I don't think anybody will listen to me who has like a legitimate following. I really don't. So you could you could prove me wrong. (laughs) I, I, I hope to, but I don't know. When you when you go through a personal loss, you need to go dark. Mm. for as long as you need to go dark Mm -hmm. and you know in the jewish tradition um during times of grief they would cover mirrors Ah. and for two reasons one okay so you probably already saw that video but you can go watch it right now it is fantastic i would watch the whole episode she did with jenny wise black but you can catch my recap of it as well but it's important to have all that information because it's not a failure of caitlin to post on Instagram. She just said, Jenny Wise Black says, put it in the proper order. So maybe there's a certain time of day where you put that phone and lock it up and go on with your day. Maybe you have a second phone. I've talked about this with my wife. Maybe we need a new phone. We have the smartphone when we have to do business and then we have the dummy phone when we just need to text or call our mom or do basic things that aren't the negative side of it. The cell phone in itself is a tool. It's not negative. It's the social media and all of the, oh, but I have a business, I run through it. Figure it the fuck out. You got to figure out how to run your business, how to do all these other things. I mean, Caitlin is beloved. She has 135,000 people liking and hearting her journey. Everyone's wishing her well. She just has to find a way to manage it all. And that might mean having her assistant run the whole business phone and she just checks it half an hour every morning for the business stuff, but maybe the assistant comes in and cleans up and sweeps the non-business things out of there, the criticisms and all of that. So we don't know what's going on behind the scene. I'm just posting this preventatively before someone goes, oh, she said she was going to go dark and eight days later, she's back online. And people say, she said she's going to go dark, but she's podcasting. This is cathartic. Podcasting is one of the best things you can actually do. Trust me, nobody has long form conversations anymore. I can't kick people out of my driving with Dave interviews. I mean, they want to stay all day long. We are so ripe and thirst. We have such a thirst for long form connection and conversation. This isn't the problem. The problem is the ruminating that comes with judging yourself on social media. This isn't it. Yeah. You're always feeling like you need to show everybody, you know, how happy you are and you know exactly how it is. Mm -hmm. And then it's just all amplified with social media. Mm -hmm. So I was telling her that I truly think part of the reason Jason and I have not worked out is social media played a part in that yeah whether that's you know not like cheating or anything Mm -hmm. (laughs) but just pressures or feeling like we're putting on like a performative show Mm -hmm. or just how have you guys dealt with that because i know that's something that you know people always assume because you have your career and you're posting about your career and you once in a while post about you and brian but you've always been a little more on the private side with that which i love 
which I'm going to take notes about for next <laughs> one. Uh, but how do you guys navigate that with all the pressure of social media and the noise? We did it pretty quickly because for the very same reasons you said of like, you do, especially when you, well, for us, we came off the show for you guys when you first got together, you feel the pressure like we have to show people, you know, yeah. how we're doing yeah. and, and because they want that, yeah. right? They fell in love with... The, you guys as a couple and they want to see how you're doing and they want to check in and they don't always get that. And so, you know, you feel like you have to perform. And yeah. I remember, I remember being in public at like, I don't know, like a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I felt like people were watching us, watching our conversation, watching. Body language. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, there was a story that came out about like us waiting for an Uber and Brian was like walked away from me. And I don't even remember why he walked away. He might have yeah. gone to throw something away. But maybe they he had a little story. Toot, you know, maybe yeah. he had to go for a fart walk. Yeah, let's yeah. have some air. Yeah. That's what I always say. Let out some air. Let out some air. And they blew it up into this whole thing. And I just remember saying, okay, Brian, I just, I felt anxiety yeah to have to perform for people i don't even know yeah and they don't even know me mm -hmm. and then i'm only giving them a piece of what our relationship is which you know a relationship is up and down like you go through so seasons all the time it is work and hard work i just didn't want to do that so very quickly that's good you we decided it quick. yeah we're only going to share what we want to share and but people it's you know people that like rachel Lindsay does a great job here of explaining the no win situation that exists there. It's a no win. I'm super, I can walk through this world and not expect people are looking at me. And even then I was at a place called Sasquatch Coffee the other day and someone comes up and goes, hey, I watch you on YouTube. And uh, and all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in my gym shorts. I, I was like, I wasn't prepared to be seen today. You know what I mean? And it's like, I don't have to deal with it on the way that they do where like, you know, you know oh, is my hair messy? Or, or my husband and I are on good terms. What if she, he tries to hold her hand and she's like not feeling it? And then you know, all these, these judgments that you, you know, in normal life, you just, don't have to deal with and someone like Caitlin probably is really good at handling all of the adversity it's almost like the better you are at handling the torment of it all the worse it hurts you because you let it you're like you you can withstand more of the beating so you just get more of that metaphorical beating whereas Rachel was like uh-uh nope not doing it no posting about this no talking about him he's mine F all of you. And some people get rubbed the wrong way, but it's like, it's um, it's someone protecting their own. It's like how moms want to protect their kids, their cubs, right? So criticize us for that. I know. There were like months that went by where Brian and I didn't post and everyone assumed that we were breaking up. They were counting how long it had been since we post each other, yeah. how long we had liked each other's posts. And I was like, I don't even pay attention. Like I'm too present in the, in real life, I'm a terrible social media person. I actually That's wish so I was better. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do because I'm losing money. I, <laughs> yeah, I, to I be honest. But that I've talked about that so many times where I'm like, I have uh, losing money to keep your sanity with social media is like the best thing that you can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I totally hear you because they feel b bachelor world. Of course, they watch you fall in love and they watch you go through this, and then they do feel entitled to keep up with you. And I do feel a responsibility to share that because I'm like, oh, it's like our own little show now. Like they edited us and we can yeah. now do our own thing. And I really loved sharing about it. I loved doing it with Sean. I loved sharing it with Jason. Um, and now I'm like, well, that I'm not doing <laughs> it anymore. Do it. Don't do it because you feel like you have to answer to every single thing. And I will be honest, I could make so much more money if I put yeah. Brian and I, totally. you know, like our business out there, yeah. but we share what we want to share. Yeah. I asked Brian yesterday again in the interview that I'll be going up tomorrow, which I have to go edit. I asked him what it was like when he lived in Miami and, um, and Rachel was working in Bristol, Connecticut for, I believe ESPN. And then also working in LA for extra. I actually had that moment where I mentioned that because Rachel's so good at her job, we covered the whole Chris Harrison thing. We, I didn't mention Chris Harrison by name, but you'll definitely pick up on the part of that conversation where we treaded on thin ice to be like, Hey, you know what I mean? Uh, it was some heavy topics that went down 
and she's good at her job. But anyway, so the whole idea, not to get off, off topic here, the whole idea of entitlement being something that exists in Bachelor Nation. I mean, this is what I talked about in this video. The idea that there, you know, audiences go, oh, we made you what you are. Like, we supported you. Now we need more and more and more. It's like, no, the transaction's over, toots. The transaction ends. You got the entertainment. You got the drama. You got the tea. Once you got all that, boom, it's over. No receipts. She can move on. She can uh, decide to go in the dark. She can decide to turn her comments off or back on. It's hers to do with it what she wants. And you can decide to consume that content or go to another buffet. That's up to you. We'll be back with more content right after this, going live on Patreon right now to discuss my meeting Tino Franco last night at my stand-up show. I'll be talking about that on patreon.com slash Dave Neal.